Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Yuko Kaifu, and I'm the president of Japan House Los Angeles. We're very pleased to co-present today's webinar with the Consulate General of Japan in Los Angeles, which is the part one of two-part webinar series that focus on hydrogen energy as a clean energy solution. Today in the first session, we will discuss Japan's leadership in building a hydrogen society. In October of last year, the government of Japan announced the aim to achieve carbon neutral society by year 2050. Prime Minister Suga in his policy speech stated that environmental measures no longer restrict economic growth. Rather, they are means for Japanese companies to promote investment towards the future and enhance productivity, producing tremendous growth. It'll be of great interest to all of us today to learn how the 2050 carbon neutral targets be achieved. Today, we have two experts who will guide us through and share with us what kind of projects are currently in the works in Japan. Our first speaker is Mr. Eiji Ohira from New Energy and Industrial Technology Development Organization, also known as NEDO, who is joining us from Japan. We will then have the presentation by Mr. Jeff Simmons from Toshiba America Energy Systems Corporation. Toshiba Energy Systems is one of the project members who work together with NIDO in order to create a society that used hydrogen energy, not only as a source of clean energy, but also as a source of economic growth. First, I'd like to call upon Consul General Akira Muto to say a few words. Uh, Consul General Muto has been a thought leader and has been promoting collaboration between uh, Japan and this part of the United States in this particular area of hydrogen energy and technology. So, Consul General. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, as always. Well, today, as you mentioned, we will be discussing Japan's vision and committed efforts in building hydrogen society. Our target is year 2030. Recently, Prime Minister Suga declared that Japan will be carbon neutral by 2050. And the government of Japan is earmarking about $2 billion per year for the next 10 years on research and development and deployment of green technology with hydrogen as a centerpiece. Our country may have been the first to seriously pass, pursue this path by adopting a cabinet decision in 2017 to achieve a hydrogen society by 2030. But we are no longer alone. Other Asian nations, Australia, Germany, Netherlands, other EU states, Canada, and many others are following in our footsteps and promoting the development of hydrogen energy. The international investment community is also very positive. But it is important that this be a global effort if it is to succeed. In Japan's case, I believe that we should not just build a hydrogen society in Japan, but that we should make a global model with Southern California and Los Angeles, our all the natural partners and collaborators across the Pacific, Pacific. I contend that we can not only take a critical and shared role in fostering hydrogen energy on the Pacific Rim, where it is already moving forward apace, but that we can also foster the hydrogen value chain model with supporting industries, technology, know-how, and employment from Los Angeles to the rest of the United States and even beyond. Mr. Ohira from NEDO will share an overview of the FH2L Green Hydrogen Project. It is purposely located in Fukushima Prefecture, which was ground zero earthquake, tsunami, and nuclear disaster of 2011. Now the FH2L project is a symbol of reconstruction and revitalization for the region and a new way toward for new way toward for the world. The upcoming Tokyo Olympics will be fueled by hydrogen from Fukushima, as will larger areas of Japan. And the research and development results are already supporting the creation of hydrogen value chain, which we hope to work together with Los Angeles and California in building for the world. Thank you again, and I hope you enjoyed today's conversation. Thank you, Consul General Muto. You, it's always good to have you. 
So before we ask the speakers to start their presentations, I, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping announcements. Please turn your attention to the screen. Audience is muted and videos are turned off. Audience chat is disabled, but please use the Q&A tool to send questions anytime during the webinar. While we appreciate all the questions, we may not be able to cover all of them due to time constraints. This webinar is being recorded and we plan to post it on the website of Japan House LA at a later date. Now let's welcome our first speaker, Mr. Eiji Ohira. Mr. Ohira is from the New Energy and Industrial Technology Development Organization or NEDO, and he is the Director General of the Fuel Cell and Hydrogen within the Advanced Battery and Hydrogen Technology Development. He's responsible for the overall strategy, execution, and coordination of NEDO's research, development, and demonstration project on fuel cell and hydrogen. Prior to joining NEDO, he served as a visiting scholar at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He's a graduate of uh, Tokyo University of Science. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Mr. Ohira. Can you uh, unmute yourself? Thank you. Thank you, Kapsan, and also your kind of introduction. Uh, good very good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Eiji Ohira. Uh, I'm in charge of the, our hydrogen fuel cell on the program of the NEDO. Uh, NEDO is a kind of funding agency under the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry uh, to promote a national R&D program. Um, I'm very happy uh, to join this uh, very important conference uh, to introduce our current policy and activity uh, toward uh, hydrogen uh, society. Okay, uh, let me start uh, for the, our current policy and the current status. Uh, as uh, uh, Kaifu-san and Muto-san mentioned about, about policy. Uh, first, I would like you to introduce the, our new climate policy. And uh, everyone mentioned about that. Uh, in October last year, our new Prime Minister Suga had declared that Japan will achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. It's a kind of ambitious uh, target. To address the target, the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry or METI formulated green growth strategy uh, through achieving the carbon neutrality in collaboration with related ministry and agencies in December 2020. Uh, this strategy is an industrial policy uh, to lead challenging goal of achieving the carbon neutrality and aim toward a positive cycle of the economic growth and environmental protection. This figure is an image how to achieve the carbon neutrality in 2050. Well, our current our carbon dioxide emission is one billion from the uh, to energy energy oriented. We'll uh, make it uh, nine hundred billion tons in uh, uh, twenty sorry. It's kind of minus twenty five percent from two thousand five. In twenty fifty, we we'll promote uh, to uh, conversion uh, to the electricity. And also it will promote the zero carbon uh, preferred in the power sector with the focus on the renewables and fossil fuels, plus CCS and nuclear also. And this, uh, we have this uh, kind of the number like 50%, 60% renewable, uh, that the percentage is just the images. It may be discussed near future. Expand the utilization of the hydrogen and the synthetic fuels in the heat and the transportation sectors. This figure shows uh, as a, our priority field uh, to be promoted on the strategies. It is the three categorized energy, the transportation, the home office, and the four technical area we focus on. Upholding high goal for each the 14 priority field, that the strategies makes explicit the current challenges and uh, a future action uh, by the priority field. And the formulated action plans uh, covered comprehensive policy and in area uh, such as the budget, uh, taxes, or regulation reforming, and the standardization and international cooperation. The hydrogen is featured in the energy category in here, and it's also all relevant in the mobility and the maritime 
and logistics, aviation, blah, blah, blah. And uh, you may understand that hydrogen is important uh, for the achieving the carbon neutrality. As uh, Muto-san mentioned that uh, to promote technological development in those priority fields, the government of Japan are planning to, to create new fund of 2 trillion N or two, uh, 200 billion US dollars for 10 years research and development activities. This is our kind of uh, to hydrogen policy, the namely basic hydrogen strategies compiled in 2017. This strategy is based on our previous target. The previous target is minus 80% a decrease by 2050. Uh, it's supposed to be uh, under the current uh, new policy, carbon neutrality 2050. This strategy may be revised in the near future. And uh, this strategy is uh, a content of the future vision toward uh, 2050 and the action plan toward 2030. And our final goal of reducing the hydrogen, uh, cost of the hydrogen, the same level of the uh, conventional energies. And we also setting target 2030, uh, such as a uh, number of the fuel cell or vehicle, hydrogen defeating station, uh, stationary fuel cell, etc., etc. And uh, this figure shows our current status of the hydrogen application. I mean, hydrogen uh, residential fuel cells is our, our first uh, commercial application and launched in 2009, 10 years ago. We also, we already have 380,000 units already installed in the Japan household. In the mobility sector, Toyota unveiled their new Mirai in, in this month in Japan. And uh, uh, we have already uh, 4,000 4, uh, fuel cell or commercial vehicle, passenger vehicle in Japan market just behind the United States, California. Fuel cell buses, it's a very unique uh, application. It's uh, mainly in Tokyo, uh, we have over the 100 fuel cell bus on load in regular operation. Hydrogen feeding station, uh, just a number of already reached almost 140. And still, this is a, a very small number, but uh, it's a very first step uh, to enhance uh, this uh, hydrogen fuel cell application. Oh, next, I will talk about our, our current activity on hydrogen fuel cell. Uh, this figure shows our the budget allocation of the hydrogen as a fuel cell. In other cell, uh, we have also uh, 1.5 billion US dollars to hold up the whole uh, R&D activities. And also that we almost 15% allocated on hydrogen and fuel cell area. Uh, from the hydrogen production, uh, storage, uh, transportation, and utilization, and the basic research, applied research, uh, from the, uh, fuel tests. Fuel cells, hydrogen refilling station, is also important. But uh, we're now focusing on basic research or uh, regulatory reforming in Japan. Uh, so the amount of the budget allocation for those area is relatively small. We allocate 19% for hydrogen energy systems. It's a hydrogen gas turbine, a large scale hydrogen supply chain, and battery gas. It's, I suppose it, uh, uh, it's a keyword is a hydrogen uh, scaling up to, for the, uh, the develop the future low carbon energy system. I want to uh, show the, the snapshot over our project for the hydrogen uh, scaling up. And the first one is the hydrogen gas turbine, the utilizing hydrogen uh, for the fuel for the gas turbine systems. This is a key technology for develop the, uh, or enhance the hydrogen uh, demand. We already installed the uh, very small one megawatt hydrogen gas turbine, hydrogen fuel gas turbine in Kobe, the center of Japan, uh, to, uh, to provide the heat and the power in the surrounded area. Uh, this system is a dual fuel gas turbine system, but uh, we already succeed uh, to 200% to hydrogen in the operation. Uh, this uh, slide shows uh, the, our, our next uh, project, international, the developing the international uh, hydrogen uh, supply chain. Issue is how to, to concentrate uh, hydrogen uh, for the long distance transportation. 
we uh, already uh, developed the uh, small uh, but uh, world first hydrogen uh, liquefied hydrogen tankers on the left side. And the uh, right side, we also hold develop the uh, hydrogen uh, receiving port facility, including the large scale hydrogen storage, uh, hydrogen loading and unloading system, the boil of gas comes to the treatment. And the party gas is also key technologies. Party gas is uh, integration uh, renewable and uh, to hydrogen to expand to or maximize uh, the potential of renewable energies. We are now conducting two uh, megawatt class and uh, part two gas uh, project in Fukushima uh, prefecture, I will talk later. And the other one is uh, in the Yamanashi uh, prefectures. Uh, we already in installed the 10 megawatt water electrolysis, uh, alkali water electrolysis, and uh, 1.5 megawatt PEM water electrolysis. Okay, I will talk about more detail about the uh, 10 megawatt water electrolysis party gas project. The facility name is Fukushima Hydrogen Research Field or FH2O. Uh, this slide shows the project uh, outline of the project. Our project term is very long, almost seven years project. And the five industry uh, kind of join uh, this other project. And our purpose is to uh, so develop the hydrogen utilization business model or uh, developing the uh, technology uh, for the party gas project. We allocate almost 200 million US dollars on uh, this project. Now this I show the overview of our uh, project of so efforts throughout, okay? And uh, we have 20 megawatt to PBOE's uh, surrounded uh, facilities. And uh, you may see there's a block building, it's a control system to, to manage the, the all of the system uh, to control the electricity and uh, control the water electricity and uh, control the hydrogen storage. And there's a white building that behind the control building and uh, we installed the world's largest water electricity systems. This water electricity is developed by the Asahikase Corporation. It's a 10 megawatt water electricity with a single unit. This uh, system uh, can produce the 2,000 kilometer cubic meter hydrogen per hour. We uh, store to 200 bar at the 20 megawatt to hydro compress the hydrogen storage. Uh, this is a system overview. Well, and uh, uh, the through the system, uh, we may provide uh, grid balancing uh, with a dynamic operation of the uh, total system, mainly uh, water electrolysis. And also, uh, we may uh, provide the green hydrogen, I mean, the utilization of the hour of 20 megawatt to people. We are very happy, happy uh, to celebrate our opening ceremony with the uh, attendance of our previous Prime Minister uh, Shinzo Abe and uh, uh, last March. It means that uh, to, to this project was a high expectation uh, from the government or central government level. Lastly, I would like to talk about our international activity, uh, mainly in California. We have been uh, conducting uh, two uh, feasibility studies uh, since last year. And the uh, uh, first one is uh, the hydrogen uh, production. Our technology is uh, hydrogen production from the uh, waste plastic. It means and uh, not, not only uh, to low carbon hydrogen production, uh, but also the working on the waste management is very much important for sustainable uh, society. The future of the technology is uh, a two-step uh, gasification. It depends on the amount of the waste plastic to low, we have very integrated uh, a low temperature uh, gas sphere and a high temperature gas sphere should be uh, used to have a uh, property uh, to produce hydrogen efficiency and uh, with a uh, low environment load. Uh, this technology was developed by uh, in 2000, of the 20 years ago, uh, through the uh, NEDO project. And now uh, Showa Denko, as a kind of chemical uh, industry, has been operated uh, nearly of the 15 uh, years, of the 20 years. 
And the next one is uh, focusing on the hydrogen utilization. And in order to promote the low emission at port, uh, we are considering the possibility of electrification, especially utilization of the fuel cells. Well, there are many devices that import, such as top handler and the yard truck. A large number of the class A trucks enter and leave the port. We will study the application of the fuel cell to these devices and also to the methodology of the supply and uh, the hydrogen to the, uh, the system. Supplying the production from the biogas and the supplying the mobile using the mobile fuel. Uh, through the feasibility study, we will clarify about the issue uh, for the realization or decarbonization at poles and considering the next step. So let me conclude the presentation. The first one is the Japanese government still strongly promoting the hydrogen a way to clarify, the government clarified the huge vision and direction. We just started the market penetration. Uh, we need um, information uh, from the market, the feedback to promote R&D activities. Okay, our goal is development of low carbon energy system. Our important is the scaling up and the integration with the other energy system. We also need to develop the sustainable model uh, such as low, low carbon and the port. Okay, uh, I will direct you to conclude my presentation and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Mr. O'Hara. I um, it was uh, very intriguing to listen to your presentation, particularly the government strategy priorities, the roadmap to 2050, as well as feasibility studies and a lot of projects that have been taken already. And I know that uh, the audience has a few questions, but uh, we set aside the Q&A session later on. So here I'd like to introduce to the audience the next speaker, Mr. Jeff Simmons. Mr. Simmons is the Senior Vice President and General Manager of Toshiba America Energy Systems Corporation. He will share with us an overview of his company's hydrogen energy technology, including its production, storage, and distribution. Mr. Simmons leads Toshiba America Energy System Corporation's new product marketing and sales organization and is also responsible for its corporate and business development activities. He holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Civil Engineering from Southern Illinois University and MBA from Southern Methodist University. He's also a graduate of the Executive Leadership Program at the University of Texas at Dallas. So uh, Mr. Simmons is joining us today from Dallas, as I understand it. Uh, Jeff, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Very glad to be here, uh, Kaifu-san. And uh, th thank you for the introduction, and, and I'm looking forward to sharing the presentation. We're, we're, we're very pleased uh, as well with the leadership of Neto in this hydrogen space, and it's very important as we move ahead in the developing markets for hydrogen. I'll move ahead through my slides, and uh, I will do my best to move us along in 20 minutes. So uh, I I'm just going to run through a, a quick table of contents. We're going to go through just a brief company profile of Toshiba and a roadmap for Japan of the Advanced Hydrogen Society. We'll show to Toshiba's hydrogen business overview, and we'll review some of the hydrogen uh, energy storage and management technologies, as well as production and utilization technologies. Just quickly, the, Toshiba is a large company. We have a global interest in, in uh, energy and other digital and physical systems throughout the world. My company, that I, the company that I work for, Toshiba America Energy Systems Corporation, uh, represents Toshiba Energy Systems and Solutions Corporation, which is the, the entity that manages the worldwide energy business for Toshiba. Uh, we report to a company here in the U.S. called Toshiba America Incorporated and uh, consolidate all of our business up through, uh, up through them. So the ESS business, which is the Shiba Energy Systems and Solutions business, has a number of product offerings in thermal power, nuclear power, renewable energy, transmission and distribution, and, uh, and medical technology. Today, we're going to focus on the hydrogen energy business. So first of all, um, the Japan roadmap for hydrogen and fuel cells uh, is posted by METI uh, in March 2019 shows a collaboration between industry, academia, government, 
And the goal is to reduce equipment and operation costs, improve hydrogen equipment performance, and reduce hydrogen production costs. As you could see from uh, Mr. O'Hara's presentation, uh, Japan has been a leader in the world in hydrogen implementation. And I believe that, that the companies and, and the businesses of Japan are strongly benefited from that. And in the US, we're expecting to, uh, to reap those benefits as well as the hydrogen market continues to grow here. So hydrogen business overview, as we, we spoke earlier, the, the hydrogen and related technologies at Toshiba are broken into three categories. One is production, which is a longstanding area of, of interest for the uh, Toshiba business. In particular, renewable energy and green hydrogen production are areas of, of growing interest and capability. Uh, from a storage standpoint, we have a, a, a growing hydrogen energy storage business, and we have a, a growing energy fuel cell business for the utiliz utilization standpoint. Uh, we actually fuel forklifts at our Fuchu factory with uh, some of our energy storage facilities. And then across the, the platform, we have the hydrogen energy management system. And this is an area that Toshiba is able to utilize and expand on its digital capabilities as well as its physical system delivery capabilities. From a history standpoint, Toshiba has been involved in developing hydrogen fuel cells for a little over 40 years. Um, in 1980, we started with the PAFC, which is a phosphoric acid fuel cell. Uh, we moved into an 11 megawatt system uh, for TEPCO back in the late 80s, early 90s. And then we moved into the NFARM PEFC 700 watt system for residential cogeneration. We sold 80,000 units of the system. And then uh, we've advanced into pure hydrogen stationary fuel cells uh, in the 700 watt or uh, to one megawatt scale and even larger. We, we can, this is a modularized system that we're still marketing and selling today. The H21 system is an all in one hydrogen energy storage system. It, it takes electricity from the grid, creates hydrogen, and stores the hydrogen in storage tanks. And then the hydrogen is utilized during times when uh, electricity demand is high to produce additional electricity for the grid or to provide backup supply. And I'll go into some detail on that a little bit later. We also have a demonstration fuel cell ship, and we're developing a, a strong area in fuel cells for the maritime industry. Uh, the maritime industry has a, an initiative to reduce carbon emissions by 50% by 2050 and to eliminate carbon emissions by the end of the century. Ohirasan mentioned and spoke of in great detail the FH2R project powered a gas plant in Fukushima. We participated in that project and are actively involved in the ongoing development. It's been a very successful exercise and it's been a, a terrific collaboration among the partners. For energy storage and management, we have the H21 hydrogen autonomous energy supply system. I won't go into a lot of the detail on the schematic, but basically this system can take excess energy from the electric grid, electricity, and it will use an energy management system to convert that, that electricity with additional water into an electrolyzer into hydrogen. And, uh, and then uh, when it's needed, the hydrogen that's stored in the system will be utilized in, in a fuel cell. And then at that time you get hot water out of the system as well as electricity. Electricity will be, will be run through a battery system and an EMS system to manage and maintain electric and supply, uh, demand and supply balance. Uh, this is a modularized system and we have actually scaled it to a much larger scale than, than the modules themselves. Some of the installation cases for our H21 system are a backup energy system at, at uh, Kawasaki Marion. Uh, we have a number of other business continuity, mobile shelters, additional business continuity for applications that require additional power supply certainty. Here we have uh, our first H21 system that was installed. Um, it was installed at the 
at a hotel that's quite unique in Nagasaki, uh, Japan. The Hinana Hotel is the world's first hotel staffed by robots uh, to help you check in and out and do other work around the hotel. The, the H21 system was installed here in 2015, and it was, it was our first order. The system produces hydrogen using energy from solar panels during the summer, and then it uses the hydrogen in the winter to create electricity or generate electricity. The system uh, provides enough power for one building wing uh, consisting of about 12 rooms for the entire year. We use a compact hydrogen storage system, uses metal hydride tanks, and that enables hydrogen storage uh, with just a tenth of the size of a regular hydrogen storage tank. Uh, this is a compact design and expands uh, greatly on possibilities for installation at various places, especially in mobile applications. So the characteristics of Toshiba's hydrogen energy management system, uh, as you can see on the chart here on the left, there's a superiority for, for long-term storage, and that's a key benefit when, when we're talking about hydrogen fuel cells. Um, the chart on the right really highlights the fact that for longer-term storage, Hydrogen um, is, is really more productive from a, a cost standpoint for storing energy uh, than battery systems are. And now the battery systems and the hydrogen systems work in collaboration. There's a constant balance with the Toshiba energy management system that controls when uh, the energy is going to be directed to and from the battery system and to and from the fuel cells. This, uh, this model works for uh, mobile applications as well as, as for, for stationary applications. Again, the, uh, as you can see, you don't necessarily have to take electricity out of the system. Uh, you can take heat out of the system and you can fuel your, your, uh, your fuel cell vehicles with it. From a production technology standpoint, one of the projects that we're working on now is a large scale uh, H2-1 off-grid system. It's being developed in Indonesia on a remote island that has been using diesel generators for quite a long time. Uh, with the new system, the, uh, the island will be able to enjoy and generate more electricity, uh, clean electricity, utilizing solar cells and wind turbines. And as you can see, we have a two megawatt, uh, 20 megawatt hour uh, production and storage capability. The pricing on, on this technology is, uh, is advancing. Currently, it's, it's estimated to fall between 38 cents and 95 cents per kilowatt hour. And as time moves forward, we expect those prices to, to reduce. Um, our goal here at this facility is to, is to reach 40 cents per kilowatt hour. And, and so we're, we're moving ahead with the project. This is the first demonstration unit we expect to have it online in 2022. Uh, on this slide, you can see the, uh, the, the larger schematic, and this is a very simple cartoon of, of how the, uh, the system works. Basically, you get power from the power grid from solar power or wind or other electrical sources, uh, of course, to, to qualify as, as uh, green hydrogen you would have to have uh, non-carbon emitting uh, power generation. The, uh, the power source can go to the electrolyzer or it can go to a battery system, or it can go directly to the demand on the grid. Going through the hydrogen uh, electrolyzer system and the storage system, following through to a fuel cell, you do get the um, uh, hot water as well as electricity. And, and there's also the option to divert the hydrogen that's generated through the electrolyzer to a vehicle uh, fueling station. So hydrogen energy utilization technologies. And so here we're talking about some of the applications that, that we've developed on the fuel cell front. And this particular application is, is uh, quite flexible, has a very quick start time. It's a very high power to weight ratio and, and it realizes a very compact dimension. The technology is called H2REx. It's a polymer electric, electrolyte fuel cell, and it is for stationary application. It has an efficiency of, of around 50% uh, on an LHV standpoint. And if you include the heat from the water that comes off of the system, uh, we can reach efficiencies approaching 95%. The, uh, the unit is scalable. As I mentioned earlier, 
it can be as small as 700 watts and then ramp up to a 3.5 kW unit up to 100 megawatt or I'm sorry 100 kilowatt module and that that 100 kilowatt module can be placed in series to expand to one megawatt and larger. As you can see, the designations and applications, I talked briefly about hydrogen. Please bear with me if, if you're aware of, of these different designations, um, um, but I'll spend just a moment explaining hydrogen. Basically, uh, the oldest way of producing hydrogen, which generally you would call brown hydrogen, is by transforming coal into gas. And this gasification process converts organic or fossil-based carbonaceous materials into carbon monoxide, hydrogen, and carbon dioxide. The gasification is achieved at a very high temperature of greater than 700 degrees Celsius. It's, a, it's an anaerobic uh, reaction and it's controlled with, with uh, oxygen and, and steam. Um, gray hydrogen is really sort of the most common hydrogen today. Uh, the uh, most hydrogen comes today from natural gas. Um, it's of course bonded with carbon and uh, the hydrogen can be separated via a process called steam reforming. Sometimes th that hydrogen is called gray to indicate that it was created by fossil fuels without capturing the greenhouse gases. And the difference between brown hydrogen and, and gray hydrogen is that they're just less carbon that's emitted in, in the natural gas reforming process. There isn't as much carbon emitted generally as you would have if you are, are gasifying coal. And then uh, uh, there's the next is blue hydrogen, and that's when natural gas is split into hydrogen and CO2 by steam methane reforming. The greenhouse gases are captured, so uh, so they can be sequestered um, or uh, utilized in some other industrial process. And then the last, lastly, uh, the green hydrogen, uh, which is everyone's goal, uh, is to obtain uh, or make uh, the hydrogen by splitting water uh, from electrolysis using using electricity that is non-emitting. So a few of the hydrogen fuel cell ins installation applications and examples are, are shown here. I won't go through every one of them, but you can see we have stationary uh, locations and we also have um, a fuel cell uh, boat that is, uh, that is in uh, demonstration currently. Uh, the installation case that uh, I'd like to highlight now is, is uh, an accommodation facility. It's a, it's a hotel that's in uh, uh, Kawasaki in uh, Kanagawa Prefecture. Um, it uses hydrogen from the Shoadenko plant that Ohira-san uh, mentioned in his uh, presentation. And uh, basically the Shoadenko pro uh, plant uses plastic and, and uh, reforms the plastic and uh, creates hydrogen. That hydrogen is shipped over to the, the fuel cell here, the fuel cell provides about 60% of the energy for the hotel, for the electricity and for the hot water systems. It's a very uh, unique application. If you're in Kawasaki uh, anytime, we're happy to, uh, um, to share and show this to you. Fuel cells for energy use. So, you know, we, uh, uh, in California, there, there have been uh, challenges with, with power interruptions, uh, mainly from uh, public safety power shutdown events. And uh, fuel cells can be a good solution uh, to provide energy to critical infrastructure and, uh, and can support electricity generation during periods when the uh, PSPS events occur. Um, as far as fuel cell characteristics, um, we have a long lifetime uh, for maritime and, and train applications. Uh, we have 40 to 60,000 hours of capability with our fuel cell system and they're suitable for very heavy use. Stationary systems can have a lifetime of up to 80,000 hours uh, and continuous operation. The last slide here um, I have is a fuel cell demonstration project that's commercializing high, high power fuel cells with decarbonization momentum and we've reached the world of ocean transportation. We're uh, working hard to try and, and reduce uh, greenhouse gases. We have a partnership with, with uh, five companies in total uh, for hydrogen fuel cells for the International Maritime Organization. And they've set a target, as I mentioned earlier, to reduce greenhouse gas for maritime transportation by 50% by 2050 and 100% by the end of the century. 
the uh, fuel cell powered uh, ship development has become a new focus, especially in Europe, that they're, they're advancing very quickly. We already had an ongoing development of uh, smaller fuel cell ships in a 20 ton class, but the plan now is focusing on larger class of ships uh, with higher output fuel cells. Um, and as a result, we're, we're focusing on a mid-sized 150 ton class ship that's under development. Basically, we are, we are aiming to, uh, to verify the utilization of our high output fuel cells for ships and the, depend, the development of the shipboard hydrogen supply systems uh, and related uh, energy management systems uh, combined with battery, battery energy storage and hydrogen energy storage. And then you know, developing a, an overall development of a commercial hydrogen supply system that is commercially available to the marine, uh, marine industry. So that concludes my presentation and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff, so much. It's been fantastic no, to know the uh, width and depth of uh, what Toshiba has been doing. It's a household name. Everybody knows about Toshiba, but I'm sh ashamed to confess that I did not know that you are really the industry leader in this uh, field. So um, I, um, we do have uh, a few minutes to take questions from the audience and, and uh, quite a few questions have been submitted. So let me uh, first ask you, I think that this question is for Jeff. You explained about the uh, differences between brown uh, hydrogen, uh, gray, blue, and green. And uh, the, the first question, then there are a few, uh, a few people who are asking similar questions, but what overall progress has Japan made in switching from brown hydrogen including imports to green hydrogen. And how optimistic are you that Japan can decrease its uh, reliance on non-green hydrogen in the future? Um, and, and Jeff, you can answer the question, but uh, Eiji-san, you, you can also answer. I do, it's fine. Thank you very much for the question. I, I think that, that there is a strong effort moving forward to, to try and shift from steam meth methane reforming uh, which is the, the most common practice. Uh, the challenge that we've got is that the uh, using electrolyzers to create green hydrogen, uh, the cost for those systems uh, or cost for hydrogen that comes from those systems is a, is a direct function of the cost of the, the electricity that you use to go into the process. So th there are some, some uh, efficiency advantages to the steam methane reforming process. However, we are working um, uh, to develop technologies that do reduce the, the cost of converting water into hydrogen, uh, the green hydrogen. And as, as you get excess energy on the, uh, on the power grid, of course, through addition of, of variable controlled uh, electric supply like wind turbines or solar power, if you have excess energy, that excess energy has a marginal value of zero on the, on the power grid. So that can uh, in real time reduce the cost of your, of your green hydrogen. So if you use that, that power uh, that's not useful on the electric grid, then there is some economic benefit to going with the electrolyzer. Thank Hope you. that helps. Well, I, I would like to make about uh, uh, to comment about the green, blue, uh, gray, hydrogen, et cetera, et cetera. Well, uh, this is kind of def definition. <laughs> this is very difficult to definition for green blue. But anyway, in, in Japan, uh, actually, it, it doesn't, doesn't matter who asks uh, about the color of the hydrogen. Our matter is uh, the carbon intensity of, uh, or cost of the hydrogen. Okay. Yes, uh, we promoting the green hydrogen with the FHO, but also we promoting the other uh, hydrogen uh, with the uh, CCS, CCU technologies. And uh, um, for the green uh, the hydrogen, just a uh, two type of green hydrogen, green hydrogen in Japan, uh, to produce in Japan, green hydrogen in uh, outside Japan, because uh, there are many rich uh, hydro, uh, renewable uh, kind of country in the outside Japan. Uh, I had a uh, optimistic and uh, pessimistic about the green hydrogen shoots. And uh, in, in Japan, uh, to, we are very much uh, poor uh, resource, a good, good area, suitable area uh, for the renewable, uh, for the wind. Our, our wind is not stable. And uh, uh, to also 80% is a mountain area in Japan, not very few area for suitable for the PV. 
So um, I must say that uh, uh, there were a renewable of the hydrogen in Japan or renewable will not cover all of the Japan demand. We somehow need to import to energy sources from the outside of Japan. But there are many uh, renewable rich country that they can produce the uh, very cheap uh, hydrogen with the renewables. Uh, so um, uh, I'm very much at the positive or optimistic to, to we can import you know, green hydrogen in the future. Thank you both. So the next question is, what makes hydrogen more efficient or greener than electric? I see you mentioned about storing water or on your slides. It is important for us to store water and plan ahead for pandemic or emergency use. Uh, so I guess that many people are wondering about uh, hydrogen versus electric electricity. So any any of you can answer the question? Yes, and uh, I was make this out super, super easy. And the electricity, hydrogen, it's not competitors. The electricity, the hydrogen, it will be integrated. Okay, uh, let me, renewable, the hydrogen must become uh, integrated. Yes, uh, renewable, we need renewable. Uh, but uh, uh, renewable uh, itself only provided the electricity. The final energy consumption, I think about final energy consumption, electricity is just one fourth, 25%. For a carbon and dioxide emission, electricity uh, sector, per sector, will prob uh, to emit it only 40%. We need to think about the other percent, like a six percent, sixty percent from the transportation sector and the industry sector. Well, uh, <clears throat> hydrogen from the renewable uh, will uh, cover other sectors. So uh, we need to promote to decarbonization not only electricity sector but also the uh, uh, to other sector, industry, transportation sector. So that's why I, I must say that we need integration for electricity and uh, as hydrogen. Thank you. Anything to add, Jeff? Uh, just one thing, and, and it's a pretty simple thing. I, I think that um, often people misunderstand how hydrogen is used, and, and, and I, it's quite understandable because the power industry and the electric industry is very complicated. But electricity is generated, and currently it's consumed immediately. And, and what hydrogen does, it's similar to batteries. Hydrogen is a storage medium. So what it does is it allows us to consume that electricity that, that would have to be consumed immediately. We can consume it when we need it. Uh, and so really hydrogen and electricity, uh, as, as Ohirasan said, are not competitors. They're actually very complementary to one another. And, and hydrogen is, is a, a medium to allow us to manipulate electricity that we otherwise couldn't manipulate in, the, uh, in other cases. Great. The next question is, I wonder if uh, producing hydrogen from used plastic can be a solution for waste management. What do you think? Yes, uh, I, I, I believe so. I mentioned that the technology uh, to, to develop the uh, under the NEDO project in the year 2000, uh, that's a project based on the waste management to context. At the time of the year of the 2000, we didn't think about uh, very few the hydrogen itself. Uh, so uh, we, we conducted this project, this technology project on the context of the waste management. So I believe that this technology work for all waste management. Fantastic, thank you. So uh, we only have a couple more minutes. So the last question should go to Jeff. Apart from Japan, where else in the world is your technology being deployed and in what sort of applications? Well, we're currently in the process of, of uh, working with a few customers in the U.S. I work in the, uh, in the Americas, so I, I can't speak for the other regions around the world, um, but we do have active um, uh, activities in Asia and uh, throughout Asia and, and uh, Australia, Africa, Europe, um, but in the U.S., in Canada and in South America, Chile in particular, we're seeing a lot of interest and, uh, and we're working actively to deploy technology there. Um, one of the uh, things that's, that's quite interesting is um, the development of, of capability in Chile. There's, there's a significant amount of capability and, and I, I think maybe at another conference, we can talk a little bit about economic transportability of hydrogen in the future and how that market will, will grow. 
and uh, uh, much like the LNG ships uh, are, are used today. But uh, thank you. Thank you so much. It's very promising. It's encouraging that um, uh, not just the United States and Japan, but elsewhere in the world, it's got to be an international approach. So thank you. So um, thank you both for wonderful presentations and wonder wonderful answer responses to the question. There are more questions coming in. I, I'm sorry that we cannot cover all of them. But um, before the presentations, I knew very little about uh, hydrogen energy, but now I'm more interested in no learning more. So that, that's an important part of it, I think. Um, thank you, uh, the, the audience, for listening in. And uh, we'll be hosting the part two of the Hydrogen Solution Series on Tuesday, March the 9th at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Part two of the series would focus on efforts uh, being made by the city of Los Angeles in the development of hydrogen technology and how Japan plays its role there. Among our speakers will be a senior official from the city of Los Angeles, as well as representatives from the industry. I believe that the link to sign up for the part two is being posted in the chat box. So we hope to welcome you back all to the second part of the webinar on March the 9th. When you exit the program at the end, you'll be redirected to the survey page. Please take a moment to fill out so that uh, we can continue providing you with high quality programs relevant to your interests. And also please follow us on social media platforms at Japan House LA and Japan Consulate LA to stay up to date on our events and programs. Thank you so much, the speakers, Jeff and AG, for the wonderful presentations and, and also the listeners for tuning in. And uh, see you again soon. Thank you.